What I'm talking about today affects one in 50 pregnancies and what you learn could be life-saving, so we need to talk about it. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, and welcome to my channel, The Health Class You Wish You Had in High School. So today I'm talking about ectopic pregnancies, but before I jump into that, I just wanna say I've missed you all. It has been a few months since I've posted. A lot, of, a lot of stuff has happened in my life. We had the holidays, I was on a 46 day strike. We're not gonna get into that today, but super excited to be back creating content for you. Before I jump in, go ahead, like, subscribe, turn on the bell so you never miss an upload. Today, I'm talking about ectopic pregnancy or pregnancies outside the uterus. And yeah, what you learn here could save a life, your life, or maybe a friend's life. Let's break down what an ectopic pregnancy is. So normally a sperm and egg meet in the fallopian tube and that's where that egg gets fertilized and it usually travels down into the uterus. That's where it implants, we're happy, we're good. It doesn't always go that way though. So an ectopic pregnancy is when that pregnancy implants and starts to grow somewhere outside of the uterus. 90% of the time it's in the fallopian tubes, but it can be other weird places like on the ovary, in the abdomen, on the cervix. So places where it shouldn't be. And a quick spoiler alert, none of those can result in a healthy baby and a normal pregnancy. And that's a problem, a really big problem. In terms of risk factors, you can see here, these are reasons that you would be at a higher risk for an ectopic pregnancy. And I do wanna highlight that if you see that and go, oh my God, I have an IUD, I'm so scary. It is true that if you get pregnant with an IUD in place, you are like at a 50% risk of that pregnancy being an ectopic pregnancy. However, your risk of getting pregnant with an IUD in place is so low that you're actually at a lower risk of ectopic pregnancy overall compared to people walking around having sex not using any birth control. So you're actually very well protected. And if you have questions about IUD, myths, questions, you can go ahead and watch this video up here. Okay, what are the symptoms of an ectopic pregnancy? And here's the thing, is that an ectopic pregnancy, again, you might hear it called a tubal pregnancy, but I'm gonna say ectopic here because I just told you, it doesn't always happen in the tubes. The symptoms of that can be very similar to a regular pregnancy in the uterus in the beginning, right? The symptoms of nausea, breast tenderness, you missed a period, you have a positive pregnancy test. But these are the four signs I want you to look out for that can be concerning. And they result as that pregnancy starts to get bigger and they can be signs of impending danger. The first is sharp pain or stabbing pain in your abdomen or your pelvis that just doesn't go away, which I know is super vague, right? Because sometimes you just get a stomach ache, but this one, you're like, hmm, something just doesn't feel right. The second sign is vaginal bleeding. Now I don't want you to freak out. You can have a little bit of light bleeding or spotting in pregnancies in the uterus and everything turns out to be totally fine, but you should still check in with your provider because we know that pain and bleeding, especially if it's heavier or they both happen together, could be a sign that that pregnancy in the tube or wherever it is, is starting to rupture and there's bleeding happening around it. And that leads to the third sign, which is kind of weird, it's shoulder pain. You might wonder, how the heck does something that's a problem down here affect me up here? And it's because there's a nerve that connects the two and bleeding that irritates your belly, irritates your diaphragm, can actually cause what we call referred pain up here. So that's actually a concerning sign that that ectopic pregnancy has ruptured and there's bleeding enough to make you feel that. Which leads into the fourth sign, which is feeling faint or dizzy or you pass out which could be a sign that there's a lot of blood in your belly to the point where now we're talking about an emergency. Now for other people, they don't know they have an ectopic pregnancy until they go in and they get an early ultrasound and it's seen on ultrasound. So you're not always going to have symptoms early on. But what should you do if you do have these symptoms? Get in touch with your doctor or your healthcare provider or go into an emergency room to get checked out. How do we diagnose an ectopic pregnancy? It's usually pretty easy. The gold standard is we do an ultrasound and it's usually a vaginal ultrasound given how early on you are. And we see it, we see that the uterus is empty and there's a pregnancy elsewhere. Sometimes it's not that straightforward and we need to do a combination of blood tests to check your pregnancy hormone level and an ultrasound, sometimes more than one ultrasound over a series of days to figure out exactly what's going on. So if your doctor is saying, hey, I need you to come back tomorrow to repeat this, they're being extra cautious as they should be. Let's talk about treatment for ectopic pregnancies. And I wanna reiterate, they, they can't be saved. They will never end in a full-term pregnancy, in a healthy baby. And if we just let it sit there, they will rupture. And if left untreated, you, you could die. So I am not trying to scare you, but these are serious things. And that is why the pregnancy has to be removed, either using medicine or surgery, 
Otherwise, this can become a life-threatening thing. And no, the pregnancy cannot be re-implanted back into the uterus. And that is a perfectly fine question for anybody to ask. If you don't know, I would answer that and say, I'm sorry, it can't. But what's not okay is when politicians um, say that it could be and try to pass laws that say that that should be offered. And I'm only mentioning that because, yeah, that's actually happened, as you can see here. And if you're thinking, hmm, is this have anything to do with abortion and trying to be pro-life? Yeah, we're going to get there. But unfortunately, no, it cannot be. Trust me, I didn't miss that day in residency. It's not it's not an option. So treatment depends on how stable you are. So you can either choose medicine or surgery. And I'm going to talk about medication first. And that medication is methotrexate. It's a chemotherapy drug. And the reason is, is we give it, it's an injection. And the point is to stop the growth of the pregnancy. And then over time, your body resorbs it. So to be a candidate for this, you have to be stable, right? You're tube can't have ruptured yet. So you have to be able to be early enough that you are stable wherever it is. There's no sign of bleeding or concern. You are able to be monitored serially because what we'll do is we'll check repeated levels of pregnancy hormone levels to make sure it's going down, which tells us it's working. Sometimes this works great. And sometimes we try it and it doesn't work. And then we do need to do surgery. Speaking of surgical treatment, this is for somebody who says, I want this treated right now today. I don't want to worry or they're not stable enough for surgery, or they're not stable enough for medication, or they can't consistently follow up. Maybe they're 100 miles from a hospital and giving them medicine and saying, come back if things, you know, if things get worse, that's not gonna work out. So surgery, we usually try to do laparoscopic surgery, so tiny incisions on the belly, but sometimes we need to make a bigger incision, and that's usually the case if you are unstable, the tube has ruptured, and we are so concerned that you are decompensating very quickly, we need to move very quickly. What we do at the time of surgery depends on where the pregnancy is. If it's in your tube, we can either open up the tube, take out the pregnancy, and then we would want to make sure that we're monitoring you afterwards to make sure that the hormones are going down and, and we've got everything Thing, or sometimes we need to remove the entire tube depending on what it looks like. What I want you to know is that no matter how you are treated for your ectopic pregnancy, whether it's by medicine or surgery, there's no difference in terms of future fertility. Said another way, one method isn't better in terms of if you want to get pregnant in the future. And I know it can be emotionally tough, especially in a very wanted pregnancy, but this is something that we have to do to save your life so that in the future you can get pregnant again. But it doesn't mean you're not allowed to grieve it or ask for support. Absolutely, you can. So how do abortion laws affect treatment? treatment for pregnancies that will never result in a baby? Thank you for asking. So because the treatment involves ending a pregnancy, some doctors and some hospitals are hesitant to act quickly because they have been instructed by their ethical team or their legal team that they need to get permission anytime there is a viable pregnancy with a heartbeat and they intervene either with medicine or surgery. But Dr. Jen, you just said it will never result in a baby. So why should they potentially delay life-saving treatment? Yeah, you're right. You're right, they shouldn't feel that they need to, but this is what happens when you put laws in place that threaten doctors with losing their license, having to pay $100,000 in fines, going to jail for the rest of their life. Like this is how things get in the way of life-saving healthcare. And I wanna show you an example of how that happened just recently in South Carolina. Let's take a look at this girl who showed up to an emergency department in South Carolina and what she was told. Hi, so I'm at Conway Medical Center. I have an ectopic pregnancy and it's on my ovary and they are making me risk my ovary even though I don't want to. They refuse to do the surgery. So yeah, yeah. She went on to share that they bullied her into taking down this video. They stationed cops outside her, um, outside her room. Of course, I don't have the medical records to review or anything like that. She was offered methotrexate. She didn't want that. She wanted surgery. She ended up getting the surgery she needed and wanted, but not before she was bullied, harassed, and was traumatized by this. And this is in a state where abortion is not really accessible. So yeah, that's how this plays out. And you can sit here and debate, well, that's not what the law meant. And then treating an ectopic isn't an abortion. It doesn't matter. This is the reality. And this is happening over and over again in emergency departments across our great country. So final take home points about ectopic pregnancies. These are medical issues that delay in treatment can cost you your life. So it's important to know the signs, know if you have risk factors. And if you're worried about you not getting the treatment you need in an emergency department, do not hesitate to go up the chain and say that I know that I have a human right to this treatment and I am demanding it. And if you do not give me the surgery I need, there will be consequences. You can, you can advocate for yourself, but not that you should have to. Okay, as always, references and resources in my show notes before. Drop comments, questions, outrage, I want to hear it all. And until next time, stay safe, stay educated, and stay protected. Bye-bye.